when you see a vibrant, diverse community of people enjoying our downtown, you get a sense of what Macon can be if it achieves its potential. I'm confident we will achieve our potential in the current downtown renaissance is only the beginning. I think the timing of the downtown master plan couldn't be more important. I know many of you have seen that um, downtown's revitalization is really gaining steam in the past few months and maybe even over the past year. Um, just in the past two years, uh, Newtown's new strategy on focusing on target blocks around Cherry Street has resulted in $25 million invested in those three blocks. Uh, occupancy increases in the storefronts from 50 to 65% and over 150 new loft apartments delivered to the market, and maybe most surprisingly, 97% of those new lofts leased immediately. Now is the moment when we can capitalize on a scale of positive change that we haven't seen in a generation since the mall opened and we lost our anchor tenants. Uh, for new jobs, increased tax revenues, enhanced quality of life, downtown's vitality improves it all. It improves our economy, our society, and our lives for all of us. The First step for us is to understand, well, what gets in the way of good things happening here? And so that, that is where our analysis begins. When we look at downtown Macon, we look at the surrounding neighborhoods, we say, well, here are the conditions on the ground. We know full well that people have a lot of problems with what's happening on the ground. They don't like the specific way that downtown functions or they have concerns around parking or vacant property. We ask the question, so what, what are the conditions that have caused that? What are we trying to solve? And we come in and we say, tell us about your city. And people say, well, I don't like this, 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 and this. Very, very easy. It's a little harder when you ask them, well, what is it that you would like? What, are, what is the first thing that we should do to improve downtown or to improve your community? So we are trying to have that conversation with as many folks as we can in downtown and surrounding neighborhoods. Share the facts on the ground. These are the problems that we face. We know what those problems are. They're not insurmountable. Uh, but more importantly, what is it that you would like to see? So that we can put together an action plan that really does result in real investment. Where it's not just a plan, we're about taking action. So everything that we're doing is about <laughs> facilitating investment downtown and in surrounding neighborhoods. It's from Mercer all the way across the river to East Macon, from 7th Street all the way to 75. It includes the historic downtown core, this area. Um, as well as surrounding neighborhoods, Bells Hill, Pleasant Hill, um, East Macon. We have to be realistic about where you're starting in order to have the most effective strategy to move forward. I think a lot of communities miss this step. We've got Navison, we've got Coliseum, we've got Mercer University, so we have 25,000 employees. That sounds pretty good until you start looking at its role. About half the employment in the city only about 25% in the MSA, that's the Macon MSA. Five counties get more rural as we leave them. So that doesn't even count Warner Robins. When I look at that and do an eight county region, we're now talking about 15% of the jobs. So a lot of those have left downtown and there's not as much of that central core as there once was. What 110% downtown delivers on is property values. That bang for the buck, return on investment, you got it. So we call that a potency, right? Isn't that a nice fun term to say? You have potent property downtown. What I mean by that is when we take it out per acre, which is the only way apples to apples to compare it across the rest of the community, we're looking at an average of 470,000 per acre market value and about 3,500 per acre tax revenue. And you can see that is 10 times in five times the city county average. That is still delivering those results with 50% of the parcels tax exempt. Amazingly, we're still looking at 400 businesses in that urban core, 200 in downtown, in that area. So what we know is that there's a whole lot of space and we still have businesses that are functioning. We're looking at about half go more retail, uh, restaurant service and a big proportion, a solid proportion is that medical, whether it be at the hospital or medical office related. It's kind of the same story across the board. There was a concentration in downtown. It dispersed and that's what's important. It didn't shift somewhere else, which happens in some places. It just moved to another part of the region. The reality is it dispersed, it diluted, and the region is not as economically strong without a center. 
there has to be a center again, whether it's from commerce, whether it's from brand, whether it's from residential, whether it's for, you know, the annual Christmas parade that happens, we've got to reestablish the economic relevance of downtown. The pros, the opportunity is you have the central location for it, you have the assets for it, you have the sunk investment, we just need to populate it essentially. If this is about redevelopment in terms of real estate, it's just as much about business support. It's just as much about small businesses and understanding smart, modern, viable business models that can move your community forward and not creating um, a turnover that starts to feel like failure, but it's because those businesses weren't gonna be successful from the beginning. It's important to have the big ideas. What is it that you'd like to see 10, 20 years down the road? <clears throat> we think it's really important to ask them, what would you pay for now? Uh, and make some hard choices and trade-offs because we're not putting together a plan that's just, ooh, Macon's wonderful, let's go forward and be happy. Uh, it's no, Macon's wonderful, and it can be even better if we invest in these specific things. And we as a community believe that those things will have, will make the greatest difference. The way you change downtowns is incremental implementation, period. So we are not overnight going to get 10,000 people in here. Uh, frankly, capacity-wise, business-wise, it, it wouldn't work that quickly. I think that the uptick, and, and to your point, absolutely stopping the decline is the first step. And then we see that uptick. But as Scott talked about with the vacancies, you've got to start having more options. And part of the challenge in this urban core, frankly, is there's downtown, and then when you go out in the neighborhoods, there's not a lot of options for a single family home rental, right? And rental across the country is now the uh, greater proportion of the way people are doing their homes than ownership.